All right. Hey, guys. We are here today to read a couple more fairy tales, uh, one classic and one adaptation. So we're going to do The Three Little Pigs, which is something I'm sure probably all of you are familiar with. Um, it's one of the more well-known fairy tales, especially for kids your age. And um, so we're going to take a look at the original, and then, or not necessarily the original, but a classic version. And then we're going to take a look at how one author decided to adapt that or change that. As we're reading these, keep in mind that you should be getting ideas for ways that you can change your stories or adapt your stories. You can uh, change the time period that they happen in. You can make them more modern. You could change the setting. So rather than um, this happening in a forest or fields or things like that, you could make it happen in a city. You can make it happen in a town. You can make it happen on a cruise ship. You can make it happen anywhere. You can change the characters so they don't have to be pigs. They don't necessarily even have to be animals. They could be people. You could um, change all kinds of things. We've already talked a lot about you could change the point of view, the person telling the story. There is a really good adaptation of The Three Little Pigs. It's from a Big Bad Wolf's perspective. Um, but um, I think that's in the classroom, and I don't have a version online. So unfortunately, I can't read it to you right now. However, I think you will like the two versions that we read right now. Uh, here we go. There was once a mother pig who had three little pigs. She was a poor widow and at last had to say to her sons, you must go into the world and seek your fortunes. The first little pig went away and soon met a man with a bundle of straw. The little pig said, oh, please, kind man, give me some straw so I can build myself a house. The kind hearted man gave the whole bundle to the pig. Very quickly, the little pig built himself a cozy house and settled in. But after a while, a wolf came by and knocked at the door. Little pig, little pig, let me come in, called the wolf, licking his lips. Oh no, by the hair on my chinny chin chin, I will not let you in, replied the pig, who was feeling tired and was taking a rest. Then I will huff and I will puff and I will blow your house in, said the wolf gruffly. And the wolf huffed and puffed and he blew the house in. In all the confusion, the little pig escaped and ran away. Then the second little pig left home. As he trotted along, he soon met a man carrying a bundle of sticks. The little pig said, Dear man, please give me some sticks so I can build myself a house. The kind-hearted man gave the whole bundle of sticks to the pig. The little pig built a house out of twigs and very quickly moved in. But soon the wolf came along and tapped on the door. Little pig, little pig, called the wolf, let me come in. Oh no, by the hair on my chinny chin chin, I will not let you in, replied the pig, who was rather busy. Then I will huff and I will puff and I will blow your house in, growled the wolf. And the wolf huffed and puffed and blew the house in. Luckily the house had two doors, and the little pig escaped through the back door and ran away. Then it was time for the third little pig to leave home. His mother was sad to see him go. Soon the little pig met a man with a load full load of bricks. Oh, please, kind man, said the pig. Let me have some bricks to build myself a house. The kind-hearted man gave all the bricks to the pig. Slowly and carefully, the little pig built himself a house made of bricks. Then he moved in and settled down. By, but, uh, excuse me, but soon the wolf came by. The wolf, who was very hungry, knocked loudly on the door and shouted, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. Oh, no. Not, oh no, by the hair on my chinny chin chin, I will not let you in, replied the pig. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in, growled the wolf. The wolf huffed and puffed, but he could not blow the house in. Then he rested a while and thought things over. Little pig, little pig, will you just let my paw in? No, said the pig. Little pig, little pig, will you just let the tip of my tail in? No, said the pig very loudly. Then I'll climb to the roof and come down in the chimney. And the wolf sat outside all night. The next day at sunrise, the wolf climbed onto the roof, but the little pig stoked the fire and got it very hot. Smoke poured out of the, up the chimney, and the wolf got it all in his eyes. He ran back to the forest, and nobody ever saw him again. Then the little pigs went and fetched the little pig went and fetched his two brothers and their mother, and they lived happily in the brick house. I missed, I've missed a couple words on that last part, but you get the, the main idea. Um, I will tell you that that's not like the, the true, like, I don't think original version, because in the original version, I'm pretty sure the wolf comes down the, the chimney and gets stuck in the fire. Um, but 
um, still pretty close to, to sort of classic form, the true traditional story there of the Three Little Pigs. And now let's see how another author did that with this, The Three Naughty Little Pigs and the Big Bad Wolf. Much different take on the same story here. Let me move my picture out of the way. There we go. Once upon a time, there were three little pigs called Indy, Nettie, and Freddy. The three little pigs were very naughty and ran their mother ragged. Poor Mummy Pig was fed up of telling Indy not to put his dirty socks on the table. She was exhausted from running after the cat and to take off the running after the cat to take off the washing pegs that Freddy had clamped on its tail. Like close close ones. She was weary from wiping up the jammy footprints that Nettie left on the floor. One day, Mummy Pig got angry and threatened to tell Daddy Pig all about it when he came home. But the three little pigs took no notice. Mummy Pig was furious and sent them outside. I've had enough, she said in an angry voice. You can come back in when you calm down. Then Mummy Pig locked the door and sat in a comfy chair. The three little pigs hammered on the door, but nothing happened. They tried to get in through the window, but it was firmly shut. I don't believe it, said Freddy. Mummy has locked us out. She doesn't love us anymore, said Indy sadly. Naughty Mummy, said Nettie crossly. What will become of us, they moaned. Nettie said, I know. If we go to the police, they will tell Mummy to open the door and let us in. So the three little pigs set off in the forest. The wind whistled through the trees. The three brothers felt a little scared, but they walked and walked and lost their way. Freddy asked, er, is it far to the police station? Indy said, the other day, Dad told me it was just beyond the forest. I'm tired, moaned Nettie. Just then, they saw a little house in the clearing, in a clearing. Let's go and ask the way, said the three little pigs. They knocked at the door. Tap, tap, tap. It creaked open slowly. A wolf, cried the three little pigs. What are you doing here, asked the wolf. It's dangerous to be out in the forest. We are, look, 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 stammered Freddy. Lolling around, asked the wolf. No, lost, said Indy. Our mummy has thrown us out. Goodness me, said the wolf. What's the world coming to? Then a shaky, boy, a shaky voice inside the house called, Who is it? My little lambkin. Er, this is my mom, said the wolf. Anyway, anyway, what can I do for you? Mr. Wolf, said Indy, can you make our mummy unlock the door and let us in? Otherwise, we'll have to sleep outside. Of course, said the wolf. Have some hot chocolate, then we'll get going. Where are you going, my little lambkin? asked his mother. I'm taking these three little pigs home, said the wolf. And don't call me my little lambkin in front of our guests. It's embarrassing. Well, don't be back late, said the wolf's mother. No, mom, answered the wolf. Don't get cold now, she added. And don't talk to any little girls dressed in red. No, Mom, sighed the wolf obediently. So there we see a connection to Little Red Riding Hood. But on the way to the three little pigs' house, the wolf became angry, very angry. Throwing your children out of the house, he shouted. It's shameful. It's a scandal. That sort of thing only happens in fairy tales. Your mummy will have to answer to me. There's going to be trouble, gloated Freddy. Mummy's about to learn her lesson, chuckled Nettie. Serves her right. Naughty mummy, said Indy. So look, they're pretty happy about this situation. But as they went through the forest, the three little pigs became more and more worried. Er, what are you going to do to our mummy, Mr. Wolf? Asked Indy quietly. Well, when we get there, I'll break down the door, go in and eat her up. Sorted, said the wolf firmly. But, said Nettie, she's our mummy and... Well, roared the wolf. I'm not here to deliver fairy cakes. You have a problem, and I'm going to sort it out. I'll go inside, gobble her up, and then go home. This took a turn <laughs> for the little pigs. When they got to the house, the wolf said to the three little pigs, You go and hide. No need for you to watch. I'll come and find you when it's all over. He kicked the door open and slammed it behind him. The three little pigs crouched behind the house, trembling. Poor mummy, whined Indy. She was so gentle and kind. 
Who will tell us stories now? asked Freddy. And who will cuddle us? We've been so naughty, sobbed Nettie. Then the door opened again, and they heard, a vo heard the wolf's booming voice. Come in here, you little scallywags. Fortunately, I talked to your mother before gobbling her up. Oh, yes, and she told me all about you. So first, you're naughty, and don't listen to her. And then you come and tell me that your poor little piglets who've been thrown out? Well. But then Mummy Pig came to the door and said, My little darlings, I was worried sick. Mummy, cried the three little pigs. Later that evening, Mummy Pig called everyone to the table. She thought the wolf was very charming and invited him to dinner. Will you have some pot roast, Mr. Wolf? She asked him. Oh, no, thank you, dear lady. I'm a vegetarian. I don't eat meat. You really are perfect, said Mummy Pig. They had a wonderful evening. The wolf told stories. Mummy Pig laughed a lot, and the three little pigs had a great time. They all went to bed very late that night. The end. And that's the end of that book, which was um, a very different take on The Three Little Pigs. Didn't follow the same storyline. Um, what would be interesting is to sort of think about, and you should do this, what was the lesson that you learn in the regular Three Little Pigs, and what's the lesson that you can learn in that, in that book? Um, because it evolved the same characters. The events were different. So it definitely was an adaptation. And my question to you is, what lessons do you learn in both versions, and are they the same or are they different? Uh, and that's the thing that you should be thinking about as well when you're writing your adaptation, is what is the lesson in the classic fairy tale that I'm adapting, and what is the lesson that my audience is going to learn from my version? So it's important in a fairy tale to have a, a lesson or something that your audience is going to take away after finishing reading. And it's um, especially important to have something sort of meaningful in a fairy tale. So make sure that you're still doing that. Don't just write something silly to change it just to change it, but make sure that you, you maintain a, uh, a lesson of some kind in your writing as you work through this. All right, guys, um, I enjoyed reading those to you, um, and we will be back tomorrow with a couple more. Right.